think I'm on day 16 or 17, 16, I think. Uh, what about 3, 14, 15, 16. So this will be day 16 for me um, in the lockdown. But I'm trying my best to reach as many of you as possible with live streams about Minecraft. And this morning's live stream, I think, went very well, um, which was stir crazy, Ian. I can't even tell you. Actually, you know what? I, I'm maybe exaggerating a little because I, I am an introvert, which a lot of people are surprised by. But um, I always suspected I was. Hang on, I'm looking for a book that may or may not be upstairs. No, I can't see it. But there's a wonderful book by Susan Cain called Quiet. That's all it's called, Quiet by Susan Cain. And it's... Uh, it's basically a, a kind of an ode to introverts. And through reading it, I came to terms with some of my introversion. Um, it's okay to be an introvert when the world tells you you should be an extrovert. You know, I'm used to being on stage or I'm used to being, um, I'm used to traveling and meeting people and being social in the evenings and stuff. But actually there's a huge part inside of me that just I just need my time out. I need to disappear to a hotel room or, or you know, something. And so when I, um, and so when this kicked off, you know, I'm on day 16 now, there's a part, there's something inside, the, the, my inner monkey is climbing the walls about, you know, getting out and traveling. But there is a very, very peaceful side of me that's like, oh, I can get all this Minecraft stuff done that I didn't do before and I can read. And I haven't, you know, I'm reading, this fast, fantastic book at the moment is heavy. It's heavy, but it's the Handbook of Games-Based Learning. And it's a white paper, basically, or a series of white papers all in one. And it's uh, it's some heavy going, but man, I needed to get into it. And this was the perfect opportunity. And so I am, uh, I'm actually quite enjoying it. And you, Ian, uh, A, learning like a boss, um, and you, Ian, you lived on two Scottish islands, so I imagine you are quite comfortable with this. <laughs> I imagine your house is your, is now your island, and you're quite happy with that. I'll put that book over there, actually. Get that out of the way. And so this morning we did hydropower, and this afternoon uh, we are going to be looking at wind power and how to create the concepts of wind power through... Um, through Minecraft and through the mechanics that Minecraft offer us. And so let me get that set up. Uh, we're going to click play, new world. Um, this morning we did hydro, which was fantastic. Uh, I don't actually have, I do have wind farms in worlds, but I don't have a wind farm world set up. So we're going to do uh, wind power as a new world. Wow, so uh, Learning Like a Boss, who's come in on Twitch, says, we were going mad too, but now we're making scrubs for the NHS. That's fantastic. Well done you. That's brilliant. Making scrubs. Um, actually, I got that wrong. Look at that. I'm going to have to come out of that world now. Actually, no, that's not true. But let me just go in and retrospectively set the settings. So we're going to go default game mode creative. My game mode creative. Peaceful. Doesn't matter. It's naturally infinite. It's given us our seed this time, which is nice. Uh, then we're gonna do show coordinates, best practice, always day, show classroom settings, perfect weather, done. Now when we go back, all is well. And we started on an island. So if I was gonna do wind power, oh, there we go. So I was gonna do wind power, this was not the place to do it. But let's say we wanted, here's, this is nice, this little village. So. We started this morning when we were talking about hydropower, we started specifically looking at the environment. What do we need for the environment? And of course, the first thing kids identify that they need is they need two types of topography. They need a lowland topography where basically water level, and then they need a highland topography where they can put a, 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 hydro, a, a reservoir for a hydro dam. And in some cases they have to make that, but in other cases they can just find, luckily enough, uh, they might find somewhere that's uh, that they can build a reservoir for here. You'll notice that water level in Minecraft is always the same, not including waterfalls, but water. All rivers, all water, always the same. Um, and so hydro is a little bit more difficult because you'd have to build your 
your hydro dam up higher, or certainly your reservoir up higher. And so what we're focused on though is wind and wind farms. So I'm just gonna take a slight, and it's coastal, which is nice. We could do it in the sea, but we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna choose a piece of higher land. And we're also gonna go away. So if we look at the, at the, the, the political or the ethical building um, of these things, quite often they're away from people because people don't like the sound or they don't like the look of them. Personally, I'm just gonna put this out there. I really like wind farms. I've walked among them. I've driven by them, I've listened to them, I've seen them in the distance. We have a lot of them in Scotland and I really, really like them. I think there's something nice about them. Almost like clean apocalyptic. I can't remember the name of that movie when they had the peacekeepers in it. It was an apocalypse movie and the guy tried to get the wind farm working. And anyway, it was fantastic. Uh, 1980s Mad Max-esque movie and uh, and anyway it was uh, I loved it and I love them however some people don't and some people are like not on my land or not near my farm or not near my coast or whatever and I'm just like okay everyone to their own and so we're looking at the right environment this is really important for setting your lesson up because if we build a wind farm down here hey it might work I mean it's not flatland can be windy too in fact flatland can be really windy in Scotland but let's aim for uh, maybe building it up in, the, up in the sky here and then we can run it, uh, run it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, we've picked our site. I'm just going to flatten this out so we've got a little bit more room in case we want to do two or three of them. And we are going to do two or three of them. And then what we're going to do, and we're going to dip into some code later. I'm just going to flatten this out. There we are. So let's just say that we've, these are the, this is the cliff peak where we're going to be doing these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get something appropriate for that. Let's just clear the coal out as well. Incidentally, we found some coal while we were digging uh, a space for wind power. So we'll just ignore that that's there. Forget coal. Um, so colouring book, welcome uh, to the stream. There is an achievement where you need to put a bed in bedrock level and one bed on sky limit. Okay. Uh, okay, well, does that relate to the, I mean, help me out if that relates to the wind power. Um, maybe I can show that in use or something. Let me have a think about that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put in quartz and I'm going to get some. Now, this is just for design. So now we need to think about the, so first part was the environment. We've considered that. Second part is the um mechanics and the structure. So let's deal with the structure first. I'm going to get some quartz slabs and I'm going to get a block of quartz. That'll do nicely. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just build my wind farm, my wind turbine, and I'm going to just give it some... Notice I'm using stairs as corners, which then give us the nice stand for it. And then I'm going to put this, uh, let's put a block and some stairs, and then let's put a block and a block. Right. So what we're missing is the blades. Now, you know, let's put some iron. You know already, in fact, it can't be iron. It's got to be one of those rods. There we are. Let's take an end rod. You know already that Minecraft doesn't have working parts. There we are. So we'll do that and then we'll have that on the end. So you know already that Minecraft doesn't have working parts. All right. Hey, Josh, good to have you in. Call of Duty afterwards. <laughs> That's my other. After Minecraft, it's Call of Duty. I need that juxtaposition. Um, and so uh, you, you, it doesn't have moving parts. It doesn't have wind. OK, so I can't create wind, which then somehow turns a turbine because it doesn't work. So what I have to do is create the turbines. Now, a way to do that would be to create a standard looking turbine. And we could create that in any, any, uh, any way that we like. So let me show you, first of all, I'm going to use a clone command 
to just make two or three of these so you can see what happens. So we're going to go into code. I'm going to press C. That's going to bring up some code. I'm going to start a new project and I'm going to call that wind power. And this brings up my coding window of which I'm going to go into blocks. I've already got an on chat command here. That's this thing. And I'm going to go into blocks and I'm going to do clone from. And now what I need are world positions. So I'm going to need world position here. Then I'm going to need another world position. And then I'm going to leave the last one as me because I want them to clone from this location to this location into this location. So we're going to take X and Y and then we're going to bundle that up and we're going to clone it wherever I'm standing. So leave the last one as tildes, as relative. OK, and now I need to go back into the game. So I'm just going to press escape and I'm going to get my wind farm. Now, all I'm really interested in cloning at the moment is from this corner to this corner. I don't need to worry about the blades because I'm going to change the blades. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my location right now, which is I'm just going to write this on my whiteboard beside me. Nine, five, seven, ninety five minus three, four, five. Remember your minuses, super important. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put that as 95377 because we're 20, what's that, 20 less, 18 less, minus 349. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to code and I'm going to put into my world positions the first set. So 95795 minus. 345. Then I'm going to put in there 953 77 minus 349. And then I want to just leave that one as zero. Okay. When I press play, now what happens is, and actually, sorry, back into code, I'm just going to make this X. I'm just going to make that on chat command X. Just that's it. So all I need to do is an X. Now, here's a hint. If you're doing, if you're doing this, I always test in the sky because otherwise you can knock things out the way because remember it will replace any blocks nearby. So it's safer to just test X there. And what I can see is what I'm supposed to, so now I know my orientation. I know where it is and I can look down and say, right, if I'm standing here, this is where it appears. And this is really important. Your orientation is key. The number of times in the early days of kind of working this out that I got that wrong. Now I can just get rid of that and I can go down and say, right, okay. So if I know that I don't want to interrupt this, I'm going to have to be at least there. And then I'm going to move one along because I want a gap. And then I'm going to move one, two, three, which would, oh no, two, which would put me in line. There we are. Now, if I type X, my wind farms will be together. That's actually a little bit too close. So let me just show you orientating that again because I don't want them to smack each other, which would be super dangerous. So again, we're just going to go up to the end of this one because that's my end point and I'm going to drop off. Then I'm going to do one, two, three. Then I'm going to go forward two because that puts me in line with this line here. And that's where I know that my orientation was. So T, X, done. And there's my second piece. So we can, it's like copy and paste. I wish it was easier, but that's how it is. And then what we're able to do for our wind farm is instead of, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Oh, it's because I cut it off there. So that's why that did that. I can then do something like, it might be a two bladed one or it could be a three and we'll just do that and we'll do there we are. and so we've got a bit of an idea of what that might look like we could have three states, four states, five states, and we're going to show you that later as we do a more complicated one. But for the moment, I'm going to take these two states here. And that gives us two wind farms. Now, 
First things first, I want to show what this might actually look like if wind was blowing and we didn't have the ability to turn the turbines. So first model is not turning the turbines. So let's try this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a groove. I'm just going to make this clean under here. In fact, we'll do it out of, just so you can see what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it out of the wind. Uh, sorry, the quartz. There we are. And I'm going to do the same back here. Where did it go? Seven, eight. Let me just make it eight and we'll bring that one up there. Uh, was it now? Was that the right one? No. I'll make that one the right one. So that was the last one. So we'll just cut that one down. There we go. Um, and you're probably thinking at this point, what are you doing? Why have you got a big groove at the back? And I did show this on another another thing, but we have to model the wind. This is the thing. And wind is not constant. It's not consistent. It's blowing. In fact, it's not blowing just now. It's a light breeze outside for me. Um, but there might be a storm later or whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take rails. So we're using, uh, mo we're modelling what it might look like if we had a wind system. And you know what? See, since we're strapped for space, I'm just going to do this one. I'm going to make it a loop. I'm going to do the same for the other one. Let's make it a loop and it will just go. Normally I have it going back and forward, but we'll just make it that it goes round and round. There we are. You're probably still thinking, what on earth is he doing? There we are. So it's going to be our little loop. And so the first thing we need in the way of rails is corner rails, because we know if we're going to create a loop, we're going to have to create a corner. And then we're going to have to create a corner down here as well. That no longer has to be a corner and that and that, as long as you've got your corners. It's kind of sensible to have those, but we can get rid of those for the moment just to show you what I mean. And then we need to create a set of, so let me just go and get myself a torch, redstone torches. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to give it a boost every time it comes around the corner. So you'll notice I'm knocking two blocks out and putting a redstone torch down. And this is just what's going to give the minecart a boost until it reaches the next one. We only need four in this case because we've done it small enough. And then I'm going to cover those up and I'm going to replace them with these. And you'll see that compared to that one, which is dark, this one's light. And that's because it's powered underneath by the redstone torch. And then I'm going to do a detector there. And in this case, just to make it random, I'm going to do a detector there. Everything else is going to be a plane. Now, the detector rail, in fact, I'm going to make that detector rail there. This might not be big enough because I think detector rails actually have. Yeah, let's just see. So that detector rail is going to do something else. It's going to run a piece of redstone charge all the way along to one point, which is this one. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me just get a piece of redstone. So what we're effectively doing is we're making redstone the visual display for wind. How do we know we have we have the act like how do we know the wind is blowing? So many jokes on this one. Now you all know already that if I just replace this with a lever and I press, the light will go on. Same with the other side. As long as this lamp has a redstone charge, it will go on. So what I need is a redstone charge from either this detector rail, 
when the minecart goes over it, it will detect that and it will activate this redstone, which may be too far. Let me just see if it is. We need to know that in advance. Nope, that's okay. Or this one, which I'm assuming, since I've done it the same, it should be okay. Yeah, it's okay. So we don't need any redstone repeaters. And so, great. Thanks for coming in, room 117. Enjoy your meeting. Um, and so, what we now have is a minecart. Whoops, le mine, le minecart. Going all French on you. Let's just take this one. And I'm going to make it one of those. And then I'm just going to pop it on there and I'm going to push it. And what's happening now is it's going round. And that's actually giving us a consistent piece of power. Because you'll see that by the time one runs out, the other one starts. So that's a consistent piece of power. And I didn't want that. So what I am going to have to do... Uh, let's think about this. Let's think, 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 think. I'm just going to have to adjust it. I'm just going to have to... Let's just stop that minecart. Pop there. That's okay. Let's just get rid of this for the moment. And let's just have the cart going further. And just for design, I want to keep it consistent. I'm just going to connect it all up and then I need to make sure that there's also power under there and power under there. Now you see, it's good, that, it's good that that happened, actually. Part of me was like, oh, it's too short. But actually, that's quite important because it's if it's too short, it gives you consistent power, which is not true of, of wind. Um, and so what we have to do is we then have to put another power rail on there. Uh, yet yeah, we've already got one under there and another power rail. Whoops, just collect one from there and put it there. And then what we're going to do is move this detector rail. And I'm going to put it there instead. And just keep that there. Get rid of that redstone, doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to have to build a redstone bridge. We can flatten all this out, we can change the mountain later. That doesn't bother me. Here we are. There we are. We just extended the model. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, now that is going to give us a very, very different result. And here's why. If we put the minecart down on here, I've already got one. And we push it this time this way, you'll see that the light goes on, then off. Oh, that didn't work. That was, and I'm going to need a repeater now, because that now is too far. This is good, this is good. These are all the things, and this is great. I love when this happens because, I mean, goodness knows, I, um, yeah, right, learning like a boss. What's the rails got to do with wind? And so we are going to find out where this is missing, and we're going to place a repeater there. There we are. And so what's happening now is that the light is going out, and the reason the light's going out is because the detector rail is when the wind blows. We're just a, It's just a model. So for our students, they're thinking, right, every time the minecart goes over a detector rail, there was a gust of wind. There was a good period of wind. And for that period of wind, we maybe got two or three seconds of power. So we know that this is giving us two to three seconds of power, which is great, right? But it's not consistent. If, we, if this was somebody's house, say this was the lights in somebody's house, you wouldn't be happy with that. You'd be like, ah, oh, the light keeps going on and off. What we might find is that on a more windy day, you might have, uh, let's just add, because what we can do is we can just add, the important thing is the loop. So what we can do is we can add another detector rail there, uh, sorry, there, and then we can add more redstone there. And all of a sudden, we have much more power because it's now detecting three times. What if it was detect to detect there and also feed in? So on a, on a much windier day, whoop, that didn't happen. I know that didn't happen because it was the wrong place to put that. 
Dog. Uh, what if it was, yeah, this one. Can't wait for it to go round. Redstone. So now you'll see that the, the bulb only goes out once. It goes out now. So now we've reduced, because it's a windier day, so detector rails equal wind power in this case. And we just make it more or less windy using this grid system. Does that make sense? It certainly did for the group we were doing, uh, we were doing this with. And for the sake of this model, I'm just going to do that because I like to keep it neat. There we are. So this is our this is our wind power model. And we're just now we're getting hang on. Yeah, we're losing it. it in fact, it's it's not even con it's it's strangely inconsistent. You'd think there'd be a pattern there, but there's not. Um, although I'm sure there is. Which uh, what do the detectors represent? Yeah, wind. Yeah. So you can't choose how much wind you get. No, you can't. That, well, you, you can. So what we do is we're just creating a random model here. So what you might end up with is, I'm just going to take one of these out. I'm just going to block this off and I'm going to say that that one. So this one, because of where it's situated and it might be situated slightly higher on the hill. And because it's slightly higher on the hill, it has three detections. Um, whereas this one, and we're just going to do the same in here. So let me just get my corners ready. is uh, this one, and actually I, I need to make this longer again, remember? We made, made that mistake before. Let's just do this. It's always about, for me, it's always about finding a way of modeling with Minecraft. Um, otherwise, these things can't be taught. It's, it's, you know, with Minecraft, it's quite difficult to say, well, we've built wind farms, but they don't. And I see lots of stuff like that. I see lots of people saying, um, the redstone's missing off one of the detectors. Oh yeah, that's why. Bum, bum. Thank you. That's why that was inconsistent. One gap. Just one gap. That's it. That's good, right? So we're just missing one gap. I'll forget that one. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to put a detector rail there. And I'm just making this up. Uh, I'm going to put another one there, quite close to each other, actually. And then, and I'm only going to have, this is, let's imagine this one was low ground, this one was slightly higher ground. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a series of detector rails in. So we need power. So first things first, let's give them a power here. Let's put our torch in and a power here. You can design this any way you like. I'm just doing this part for easiness. Whoops, nothing under there. fill this up. We're going to have to fix the cliff later if we were to finish this world anyway. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same. I've done it again. I basically need to put one there. There we are. And that's going to allow me to have my power, power, and then there and there. And so if I go back and get power rails, which were in there, give this all my power. You don't have to have the power rails there. I'm just going to do that because I want them there. And then let's get the model for the rail. And again, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, but hang on a minute. They're going to work independently, but they're not. We're going to have them working together in a second. There we are. So let's just model this out and have a detector rail so we're going to have one coming off here we're probably going to have to put a redstone repeater in there because we're going to have our actually this time we'll have our bulb there 
so it's consistent. And then we're going to have a detect a rail. Let's have one there. Let's have one right on the end. Keep having to go back and get stuff because I keep replacing it. Uh, rails, rails, rails. We'll have another power rail down here, right in the middle. Just because you have to keep the the thing is the rails won't go keep going unless you have power. And I think we'll need another power rail there. There we go. So let's try that. So all I've got is a detector rail, detector rail. Did I say I was going to put the power rail? Yeah, I did. Uh, there. So I've only got, I've got three detector rails, but they're at different parts, which means all the way down here is not going to be because this is, uh, this is a different wind farm or it's a different wind turbine. It's in a different part of the landscape. Generally, they'll keep them in the same spaces and so on. But we're just showing the concept of randomizing the, uh, the, the, wind, the, the way these things work because they're not consistent. So that's going to lead to one and then that's going to lead to one. Whoops. And that's it. So now we're going to get ourselves another one and we're going to move them that one. So let's see what this one looks like. So you see you've actually got... So they're receiving and gen they're receiving wind and therefore generating electricity at entirely different stages. But how often are they off together? And we are going to, I kind of needed to do this a different way. Yeah, I kind of needed to do this a slightly different way. Uh, no. Hang on, I'm just building a structure that's going to help us to see what happens when they are working together. And then we are going to run them to there we are. We are going to run them into anybody recognize this? Anybody recognize what's coming next? So now what we have is an AND gate. So what we've done is we've made an AND gate. So the learning objective of this lesson, uh, learning like a boss, is to look at how wind power can should be generated, where and how and what the structures look like and what the environment looks like, and then how we can model what that looks like as a renewable energy. So how do we get electricity from these. And in order to do that, we have to model wind. We have to be able to say, well, what does wind look like? Wind is random. Wind blows inconsistently. Wind is more powerful when it's up high than it is down low, for example. Um, and we look at the geography of wind. And in doing that, I haven't particularly modeled this well because this one and this one are the same. Um, having said that, you could have it that they're if they've got three detectors, four detectors or five detectors, depending on the heat on, on the height. Um, yes, so it's, a, it's an AND gate. And so now what we're doing is we're working out what two of these farms are giving us. What if we had three or four or five or six or seven? And all of a sudden, and I'm actually going to see if I can clone this across and see if we can maybe do a whole clone. But what if we had seven of them or eight or nine? And this is why they do it. This is why wind farms are... There's many, many, many of them because the more and more and more wind farms you get, the more powerful and consistent the wind is, and they're able to uh, they're able to capture whole swathes of it. Plus, wind changes and wind moves, so it might hit a wind farm and then you know swoosh off to a different direction, and only one quarter of your wind farm actually captures the ca captures the capacity and so on. Or at least this is what we discovered when we were when we were researching it. And so the higher 
the wider, the more powerful, and the more the wind farm um, uh, uh, wind turbines there are, the better. And so we're actually not getting we're getting break break and then big consistent, then break break big consistent, break break big. And so this, let's see if we can clone this now. So I already happen to know that my cloning, and I'm now going to do the full clone. So we're going to go from here. I think that would be that would be here, right? If I look up, yep. And here, technically. Uh, and one down. So this is where I'm trying to clone from. Let's just make sure that we clone anything that way that we didn't want, including this land. Not that it's going to matter. Okay, so I'm going to take my new coordinates, and my new coordinates are 950. Actually, I need to go one down. Um, and the reason I need to go, I need to go two down because I'm trying to capture the redstone as well. That could have been a nice mistake. So there we go. So 950, 74 minus 352. Then we're going to head over to our wind farm piece. That would be aligning with there and there. Actually, one more along. That will do. Uh, 976 101 minus 332. Right, let's see. Let's go back into our code. Let's go world coordinates. And actually, I'm just going to copy and paste and I'm going to call this one Z. And then I'm going to change it. It just means we always have X to fall back on. 950 95 minus 345. Kind of like the hydro we're, we're just trying to work out how to model how to get the kids to think about what is wind how on earth could you capture that and do something with it that would generate minus two three two generate power so there we go so remember what did we do uh jake i'm i'm talking to you on this one jake's listening what do we do before we actually apply our code to the to the location we want it to be in Sequa. Wow, my favourite Android. I've missed you. Checking me out on Twitch. How are you? Um, yeah, Education Edition is very different, Sequa. Very different. Um, that's it. We sky it. That's exactly what we do, Jake. We sky it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to type, uh, what did I call it? Z? That didn't work. Is that the last one that I just didn't get rid of? Probably. Let's try that again. Z. No, look, I've made a mistake. Where is my, what's going on with my code? 195 to 101, 976. I must have got something wrong in my code. Let's go look at that again. Dun, dun. Right, 950, 74, 5, 352. Let me just check that. 950, ah, 74. Unbelievable. You think I could read? Yes, Sequa, I'm so glad to see you on our on our stream. You looking after yourself? Are you all your family are safe and well, right? So let's sky this, Jake. We're gonna do T, then we're gonna do Z, and that should have given us. Oh, it didn't. Why on earth did it only give us? I've obviously not read this again. I'm going to show you another little um, another little thing. I've obviously not done any of this right. 950, 74, minus 352. Oh, 345. I don't even know. Oh, I just didn't change it. It's from the original. I just didn't change it at all. <laughs> Coordinates. So important. There we go. Three, five, two. We got it. We got it. So now I'm going to show you another little cool thing. You ready? I'm going to get on player fly. So we're just going to drag on player walk. We're going to change it to fly. Now you have to be super careful when you do this. Blocks fill with air between five, five, minus five, minus five, minus five, five. Play. Now, that's going to say, so when player flies, fill with air 
in this bubble location. Five, 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 five above, five below, five left, five right, five in front, five behind. And so when I fly, we can get rid of, just like an eraser, we can get rid of stuff real fast. See how that's working? Just gonna get rid of all of that. It's just an eraser. And, so, and it's a great, it's a land clearer, right? It's just that that's all it is. The only thing I would say is, it's like any eraser, when you've finished, you don't keep it in your hand while you're drawing, you put it down and you go and get the other tool. So we're gonna put it down, we're gonna disengage it. Because otherwise, everywhere you fly, you'll rip up the landscape and you'll ruin your, your stuff. So we're just gonna keep to this and we're gonna do a clone this time. Let's just do this Z. Ta-da! Well, we got this time. Right, we got the whole thing this time. You'd think I would've got that first time. And it's given us the AND gates again, which of course we can, we can duplicate and play with. So that's good. So the only problem is, and I'm just gonna go back in and get rid of this one. Uh, Jake, tell me what the problem is. And actually Jake, uh, just so that other people know why I'm asking you specifically, tell me uh, in the chat if you don't mind, um, what uh, what age you're in at school? What what class are you in at school? You're, um, just so that the people that are listening, and I know that there's parents listening and teachers listening, but I keep directing my questions at you, Jake, because I know that you think along these lines, but you're also very young and this is the world that you live in and you love Minecraft. So there's a problem, Jake, and I'm gonna show you it. When I press Z and I press Enter, the problem is if I want to put my, my, um, if I want to continue at this side, not this side, the problem is, whoops, it was at the it 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 spawns to the rest of to the to the right of me, it clones to the right of me. So year five, that's right, but your home ed, which is awesome. Well done, mom and dad. Um, but you're technically year five, which is amazing, and you're able to answer all these questions and you get the processes by which I'm doing all these things, it's fantastic. Yes, ready, du, 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 du. disable a razor, because I didn't last time and it caused a problem. So what I'm gonna do is, the solution to this, Jake, is to work out how many blocks I cloned. So this is a bit of maths from where I was. Two, because it includes this one. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, whoop, 20. It cloned 20. So in order to be able to do that, I am going to have to be 20 blocks in the other direction. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Whoops. Here we are. There's my 20 blocks. 21 blocks, technically. Yes, exactly. And then what I'm going to have to do is stand on the end of that, which would make it 21. And then I'm going to go all the way out over here. Now, the other thing to remember is I also need to be roughly within the same height. So we already have to go down a block because that one's too high. And then we have to go down one, two, three more. So I'm going to have to go down a block and then one, two, three more. And that is there. So it's down a block, one, two, three, and stand. So I've done it. So if I stand here and then press Z, I should end up, oh, I was one too high. But that's okay, because now I have four wind farms. And then, and then in exactly the right place, apart from that one down. And what I can actually do is, because I know it replaces, I can just go up here and I can do... Z. And what that should do is flatten it out for me and maybe just leave me one... No, it didn't actually. It replaced because I think I went too high. So that's good. So now what we've ended up with, minus this strange duplicate coal thing in the middle, is we've ended up with four wind farms. So now we can really start to ramp this up and set this up as, well, what happens if we have four that are at different stages, different places, uh, different heights, for example. I'm not doing them at different heights um, for sake of the demo, but you might be. And because we've got, this is all working, what we can do is, uh, although I've got rid of
where did that is that because there was nothing along there yeah there was nothing along there so it just replaced it so what I can now do is I can join this and we can create a a much smaller where would the middle be the middle would be that one so suddenly we've got another one that and that and that and that right so now we just go over here and we randomize these now so let's just take this detector rail and move it to there so it's even closer because we're going to say this one was actually quite high up and then we're going to put another one there uh, where's my detector rails this is higher up so instead of three this is going to have four let's have one there instead and then we're going to get some redstone and we're going to link it to there all right so take it the redstone is working why is that why is this one lit up oh it's because that one is fed by a negative and that's fed by a positive so there must be something oh you know what it'll be let's just oh that's interesting why on earth is that that's a bug for sure that's not happening on this one as soon as we put it there it's bugged oh look at that it must be where the rail car stopped watch this I bet you that's fixed let's just try this detector rail and then redstone yeah it was where the red so that was interesting when we cloned it that must have been where the rail stopped and so it was permanently thinking it was detected how interesting okay so we're going to do that we're going to keep oh that's the same again and we're just going to have to replace these so it mustn't have been where the rail stopped it must just be clone detector rails there we are interesting but not that side anyway we're going to get rid of that one and we're going to put one on the end again until we have four here so what's that it's one two three let's get one down this side then let's just say that side because these are going to be higher more powerful maybe bigger something like that and then we'll get our uh, carts and we'll get another cart here there we go and then we'll just continue this now we're going to need redstone repeaters right yeah so let's just put one there and let's put one there that's not working for some reason why is that not sending is that working there it is, it is now right No, it's not. Hmm, cloning redstone doesn't appear to work. Why is that? Oh, it's because I haven't got a rail on it. It's stopped, look. Duh. Right, okay, we have to look at that. Don't. And that doesn't appear to be powered. That's why it's stopping. Okay, excellent to know. And that's why my torch, <laughs> my torch fell in the sea. Troubleshoot 101, right? Let's just put some mud there and let's just put some mud whoops, there. Sorry, technically it's called dirt. But it's all mud to me. Right, let's put that 
there and there. Power rails there, there, minecart there, and let's push it the other way. Go. There we go. And what we might end up with. No, we still got breaks in the power, so we would need more and more inconsistency and we would need more wind. I love that though. Look at that. That's our detect for detect for wind power. How fantastic. Yeah, it's a bug. I see that. Oh look, we're getting long streams of power at some points. Look like that one, that one, and then a break, and then so these are brownouts in South Africa, for example. They have this all the time. They have what they call brownouts and they're 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 consistent. You know, they're like just you had power, you don't have power. Oh, power's back on again. And that happens in businesses, it happens in homes all the time. And it's because the national grid is not generating enough electricity or for the for the demand. And so check the length of the redstone touches as you did extend the length of the wire. Yeah, so I'll just double check that. They're all getting there, but I think they are. I'm just checking all of the, it's all working. Yeah, it's all working. I'm not expecting it to see, here's the thing. At this stage, I mean, the last time we ran this, we needed, I think we needed a farm of 10 to finally get some consistency. And we had 10 kids that all built their own. And then they gave it all random wind power, depending on where they were based. We had a, a grade for wind power and how many detector rails they were allowed. And then they had it. Um, I mean, the easy thing to, to do would be to make it consistent and say, right, suddenly there's a storm and that, whoops, is, is one. And also there's another one there. Or it just happens to be a particularly windy area. We're going to do the same there. And another one. Oops. I think I'll need a, let's just put one of those there just to make sure. And then we can see that actually there it's on and then it's off and then it's on for a long, long, long time off. Yep. So we're actually, we got it down to really short little nips and so on and so on and so on. Um, this, when we've run this out, we've run this out with uh, 10, 11, 12 and 13 year olds. Um, any of the any of the renewable energy stuff is from 10 to 14 actually but 13 they generally um, 13 and 14 year olds in the same class so 10 to 14 and they love it once they grasp the concept once they've got like the oh so detector rails are when there's a gust of wind what we haven't done is animated these yet so let's do that great I'm glad I'm glad you think so, Sequa. Sequa says it's a pretty good demo, to be honest. Um, it's just finding modeling. That's all it is. It's one of the things, one of the strengths, I think, of Minecraft is that it's a modeling tool. And we're just trying to find the modeling. We've got one electrical grid here being powered by wind farms, which are modeled by detector rails. Just like the rain in the cauldron in the hydro dam. It's like the rain, the cauldron, links to redstone, which creates electricity. It's just a model for water pressure. So what if we wanted to make these look as if they are being... Um, so I'm going to go down here and put these over here. They're actually being animated. And this is a little trickier. This requires code. We can do some really cool stuff with this. So I'm just going to go to here and do Z. And that's going to give us our builds again. I'm not really interested in the redstone part, so we can ignore that because um, we don't need any of this. Is a, this is now a different model. Oops. I just destroyed all of that. So we can just get rid of all of this. That's fine. In fact, let's just fill it with air. But be careful about how far down we go. There we go. Do, 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 do. I'm just making a hole, Mr. Farmer. Yeah. 
I know, right? Nice and clear. Oops, I just... <laughs> he's just like, what's going on? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but we have bought this land. We're a hydroelectric power company and we've bought this land and we're going to be putting wind farms right outside your house. And so, <laughs> call your lawyer if you want. So I'll just fill this out so we don't... Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make it look as if it's being animated. And so somewhere else, I am going to make these. And we're just going to, I'm just going to make it visible for you. <laughs> uh, so what we got, how many did we make those before? We made those one, two, three, four, five. The middle being five. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four. Now, that's our first one. What I now want to do is I want to start, it doesn't matter how close it is because it's not going to affect it, I want to start this one and then we're just going to do one, two, oops, three, four. And actually for easiness, for ease, I'm just going to change the middle one so that it's yellow. One, two, three, four, that's the middle. One, two, three, four. Oh, I got that wrong, sorry. That, uh, the, middle's, the middle on this one is three, actually. Um, there we go. And then I'm gonna do one, two, three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna get a third one. Actually, I wonder if we should just do that. Wonder if that first one was just too long. Yeah, there we are, that's better. And then I'll move it down one. That's actually more consistent. I should have thought of that to begin with. Four was too big on the diagonal, but didn't look too big on the other one, but yeah, just corrected that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more, which uh, I'm going to do, is that one away or two away? It's two away, good, so I'll do on that. Then I'm going to do that, and then the middle. And I'm going to do, that means the top one should be, There we go. This one's just going to be, it's, it's probably not perfect, but it's just to make it look as if it's at a slightly different angle. And I think I should probably do the same for that one. Yeah, that's better. There we go. That just makes it look as if it's at a slightly different angle. Right. So then I need the coordinates of each of these. This is really important. So I'm going to get the coordinates from bottom to top corner. So let's just write these down one at a time. So I'm just going to do a symbol on my whiteboard of what they look like. There we are. And then I'm going to put 950, 64, minus 230. And then I'm going to go to the top, which is... And if you want to be sure to get it right, just place one there. Because remember, it takes the coordinate of the one you're, the one above the one you're standing on. So that's the exact correct coordinate. Because I want to take that coordinate there. So I'm going to take this one, and that would be 950, 70, minus 224. You're gonna love this effect when it's finished. You're gonna you're gonna love this. Um, 
then what we're going to do is we're going to do the next one. So I'm going to have to remove that for a second because that's my bottom one. And this is the second one, which is 950, 64, minus 221. Replace that. It's important that it's replaced. Uh, technically, I hide these somewhere underground in a, in a, in a big space that I've carved out or something. And, I, and you'll know why in a second. But um, then we're going to take 950, 70. Minus two, two, one, uh, two, one, five. There we are. And then finally, what does that look like? That was there. I'm going to go and get the bottom of this one. So I'm going to have to get rid of those two because I've nothing to stand on. That was just because of where I built it. Get rid of those two. Take the first coordinate, which is 950. It should always be 64. It should always be, and then 211 is what differs from all the others. Put them back, and then I'm going to go and get this one. Is that right? No, nope, it's not. Look, I need that one. And that's going to be 950, 70 minus 206. Okay. There we are, let's just make sure that was right. Yep, got it. Actually, that's not true. I did that one, but I should have been on that one because of that. So let me just double check that. That was 212, not 211. Almost. Wouldn't have been a huge problem. So now I've created my three, we're basically going to animate. These are my three frames. We're doing stop, stop motion animation with Minecraft. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test one of these theories. So let me just get rid of this. And we know that this is our center point. I just don't know how to get it to the center point yet. And this takes a little bit of maths and trickery and just a bit of, we just have to work it out. So there's our center point. We're only gonna do it on one just now. Um, and so now I'm gonna go into C and I'm gonna do, we'll start with on chat command so we can show it modeled. On chat command wind blocks clone from and then we're going to go and get our world positions. Very important. World, world. And then the third one this time will be a world. So positions, world, world. And then we'll just take another one. I'm just going to copy and paste that in. World. So this is from, to, and then into. And I wish it could do it from the center point, but it doesn't because that would make it easier. But we will work this out. We'll work this out together. Right. So first things first, we want to do the straight one. Uh, our very first one, which is 950, 64, minus 230. Then we're going to do 950, 70. And then that was minus 224. And we want to do that into... So let's go back and see. I think it's going to do what it normally does, which is clone down the way from me. So I think we're going to have to go down three and along three. Technically, down three and along four. So one, two, three. And then one, two, three, four, like, like last time. I think. Sequa, uh, I haven't used spreadsheet. Yeah. Exactly. Use squared paper um, to do this. So let's, but here's the thing. I want to try this away. So now that I think I know where I want to try it, I'm going to try it here first. And I'm going to say these coordinates. So that is 92677 minus 273. I have to say one of the best tools that I've ever used is a whiteboard beside my desk. 
because I used to go through, when I was doing coding like this, I used to go through notebooks and notebooks and notebooks, and it was all just numbers. It's ridiculous. So I use a little whiteboard, and then what I do is I just um, write on the whiteboard scrub, write on the whiteboard scrub. That's it, um, for, all my, for all my numbers and notes and things for Minecraft. Um, so I'm going to try this one. So it was 9377. Let's try this. Let's go back into here and say uh, 926. 77 minus 273. Oops. There we are. Let's try this now. So, wind. Did that work? Oh, it's one out. It's Look at that. It's one to the left. Or one to the right. It's, it's technically one to the left. So that's okay. Because now what I can do is I know that I just have to make it 92677972. And then I have to move it back to where I thought it was going to work. Because it, it worked there. Yeah. So look at that. So I just have to basically make it 9397272. Not two seven three, two seven two, which would be there. No, nine three four. What am I doing? Why did I think? Oh, that's because I did it the wrong way. It's supposed to be there. Yeah, there we are. Nine three three seventy seven two seven two. So let's try it. So let's go to C. 933. Whoops. And the good thing is, once you've got this, it's copy and paste. 77, which was already in there. And then minus 272. Minus 272. There we are. Right, okay, so let's try this. I'm going to get rid of this one. And then I'm going to do Z. Uh, no, sorry, wind. Boom. And we end up with this. Then we're going to go back in and we're going to do... I'm going to move this over so you can see it. I'm going to put it up higher. And then, in fact, I, no, I'll not get rid of that just in case. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I get into such a habit of keeping code just in case. Um, I'm going to move this one into the middle here. So this is the one we're working on. Then I'm going to go to loops and I'm going to do pause for a millisecond and then I'm going to just like a millisecond and then I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to put in the next second set of coordinates remember 95064 minus 221 to 950 60, uh, 70 minus 215 into the same location, place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type wind and we should end up with one, two. See how that changed? Let's do that again, wind. We end up with one, two. And then we're going to just do exactly the same. So we're going to go C, then we're going to copy that again. Then we're going to, whoops. Then we're going to put that in and we're going to put in the third set. So all we're really doing is we're animating. We're animating things that have been previously made. So 950 we knew was consistent. 64 was consistent. It was always this one that changed. And that was minus 212. 95070 minus 206. If you do all the numbers beforehand, it's all just a bit of um, work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test this before we do anything else. I'm going to get rid of the yellow and rid of that yellow because we're done now. And I'm going to type wind. There we go. And so now what I can do is I can change this to just 10, 10. And then we're going to go to loops and we're going to stick a forever loop on that. Press play. That's maybe a bit quick. <laughs> yeah, it's too quick. Oh, it's slowed down because it's caught up with itself. Yeah, that's too much of a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this maybe 50 instead. 50, oops, 50 would work. 
Um, Sequa, I don't know. I tend to just do it manually because remember I have to teach this to kids and I don't know if I want to. Here we are. But which way is it turning? That one is not actually. So here's the thing. What I can now do is I can go down. It's all still working and I can redesign these. So what if I did that and that instead? Oops, that wasn't right. Uh, that was. That wasn't right either. Let's see if that looks any better. I think that looks a bit better. It looks like it's moving just a little bit more than it had been. I maybe have them in the wrong order even. You can muck around with it. You can do what you want with it. Um, but we get the idea. It is still a bit slow, right? What if we do 25, do you think? Maybe not anything actually. Why don't we take the pauses out and see if that makes a difference? Oh, <laughs> that's happening really fast. And then it gets stuck, like it's gonna get stuck because it catches up with itself with ticks, that's the problem. Um, so you kind of do need a regulator in there. Let's just put a time regulator in there. Um, and we'll do 20. That'll do. It's nice and turning around. So we've animated a wind farm. Now here's the thing. What we can then do is we can do all, now that we've got the code working, we don't have to have it in a forever loop. What we can do is we can have it in a forever loop that says, let's go back to what we were doing. Let's imagine rain is our condition for windy day, a windy day. So let's do weather clear and then loops, pause for, and then maths, let's go into maths and do, pick a random number between one second and, oh, let's make it 30 seconds. So this is gonna be, now we did this this morning, uh, pick a random, so we don't know how long it's gonna be clear for. And then what we're gonna do is, Every time it rains, let me think about this. Let me think, think, think. Weather, rain. I'm trying to think how we make this truly random. We might have to work on this a bit together, but for the moment, For the moment, let's go for weather rain, then this starts to happen. And that is going to happen for we don't know how long. At which point we then repeat weather clear. And we repeat and then oops that's the wrong one then we do weather rain oh hang on no that wouldn't be right that wouldn't be right we'd have to do that would have to be out of there and we'd have to have another little pause in there because otherwise I'm only animating one at a time so that's not right so we'd have to have weather rain and then it does this for the thing and then we don't know how long it does it for because it's just going to keep doing it. Weather clear, pause. Here's the thing though. Let's go back to our map. I don't think I've quite got the code right but it's a nice little exercise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a redstone block 
and I'm going to put the redstone block over here. I just want to see what that code's doing because did I keep it in a forever block? I think I kept it in a forever, didn't I? What did, what did I do with the code? Yeah, weather clear, rain. So when it rains, this should go round and round and round. We could actually do it the opposite. We could make it that when the weather's clear, we've got a great windy day, and when it's raining, we have got a damp kind of. Yeah, Sequa, that's actually what I was thinking. I don't have time to do that on this stream. Yeah, so every time it rains, we get wind except it hasn't, it's actually stopped going round. So that's something to do with the, oh yeah, so what it does is it did it three times and then it waited, so that's not gonna work. Hmm. We're gonna have to think about this, and I don't have time to do it on this stream, but what I wanna do is just show you the principle, and then maybe somebody could work on this with or for me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get rid of that for the moment. I'm gonna take its, its uh, Location so that is 950 64 minus 232. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I need that location there. I need the location of which one was it? It was that one, right? Okay, so I need the location of this. Ironically, there's coal at the bottom of it again. Minecraft's trying to tell me something, and I am not listening. Um, so the location of this one is 938.64 minus 269. Right, let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm then going to have a block of stone that runs down there. And we're going to have redstone. This is our electrical wires already plugged in. There's our lamp. Whoops. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have redstone. There we are. Okay. And so, put the animator inside its own for loop. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do another clone. Let's do another clone. Now, what we're going to do is we're now going to be cloning 950 64 minus 232. This is our redstone that we're, we're cloning now, our redstone block that I put randomly over there. Uh, then we're going to be uh, 950. Yeah, we need to put that in again, 95064, because remember, it's only one block, so we have to repeat that, 232. And then we're putting that into uh, 938.64 minus 269. Okay, press play. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that needs to be at the beginning. And we're going to take out the weather rain. So let's just move that and get rid of weather rain altogether. Because we're going to I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But for the moment, this redstone one needs to be in here. You can also add a comment. So this one is redstone. If you right click, then those comments and you can always look in that and say oh that's my redstone one that's my this one add comment is animation one and so on whoops press c you'll see the comments open up and we can always just minimize those i'm going to minimize those adding comments sometimes helps and then uh i don't want random clear either so let's just get rid of that let's get rid of that let's put these aside we're going to come back to those in a second that was a bit messy so redstone Redstone first, just simply because we want that to, to happen. Then we're going to do this, and this is in a forever loop. It's not in a forever loop. It can't be in a forever loop. It has to be... 
How do we stop it? Right, I'll show you how to stop it just, just easily. We'll um, put it in a, we will put it back in a forever loop just to show you this example. But you wouldn't normally do this. This is where we would add conditions. We would add variables like the weather variable. If rain, then. In fact, that's what we could do. We could use logic. If, then. Oh, my head just bristles with this stuff. I love it. I love it. Okay, so redstone. And the reason we're doing redstone at the beginning is because we're going to do the redstone, then we're going to do the animation. And at the end of the redstone, we're going to do a pause for... 30 seconds. It's going to be a big wait for us, but I think it's good. Well, yeah, 20 seconds. It's going to be a big wait for us, but it's going to be worth it. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to here. Um, I'm not even going to take that. I'm going to do a fill with. So we're going to do fill with. And then I'm going to take those redstone coordinates. Oops. And I'm going to do, it's the bottom one. It's the last one where the redstone ends up. And I'll, I'll explain all of this when we get back into the world. So what, I'll show you what I've done. Fill with air. And I'm going to take this back down to the bottom. And I'm going to put it there. So here's what I'm doing. I am cloning a piece of redstone into the bottom of my wind farm. I'll show you what that looks like. So when the timer starts, the forever loop starts, we are going to get a period of, I need to put the redstone back. So that, that would be handy, would be to put the red, whoops, the redstone back. So that piece of redstone is going to get planted in there, which is going to turn the light on. That is the condition that will, so, when this is turning, the redstone appears. It's like a it's like a condition. When wind turbine is turning, wind turbine generates power. Power is placed here and generated to light a light. Then, and I need to do that. So I'm going to do loops. I need a nested loop, uh, as Sequa was suggesting. I need a nested loop. So I need to do that, and I need to do that fifty times. And then I am replacing air in that same space for 20 seconds and it will be gone. So let's try this. I need to get rid of that at the moment. And then I'm going to type wind. What happened to my first command? Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what well, I've, I've obviously got it wrong. So I said I'm going to do that 50 times. I should have maybe done it 20 times. Let's just go back and make that less repeat 20 times, 10 times. Let's just do it 10 for the moment and then we'll go back up. What happened to this command? Clone from. Actually, what would be easier is to do a fill command instead of a clone. I did clone just so you could see the original piece, but we should just get rid of that and we should redstone. That'll do, press play. There we go. So that's working, it's on a forever loop. Now, what should happen is, while that's turning, we've got a light. What will then happen is, at the end of, once that's done that 10 times, so basically 30 turns, there, the power's gone off. The wind farm stopped and the power's gone off. And we're only going to wait for 20 seconds and then we might get another burst of wind. And this is how, this is how we randomise it. I remember now. There we go. So suddenly the wind farm's turning again and we have power. And that's hidden underground. Nobody needs to even know that that's there. That's kind of like, as far as anyone's concerned, Nothing going on here. It's just a wind farm, friendly wind farm above the ground. But actually, while the wind farm's turning, I'll just keep the bulb in, in check. So there we go, wind farm stopped, electricity stopped. And what we can do is, we can go to repeat math 
pick random number from five to 50 times, and then that's gonna be consistent, and then we're gonna pause. So we don't know how long the pause in the wind is gonna be, because we'll go back to maths and we'll pick a random from 1,000 to 20,000, please. Now, now we've randomized it, there we are. So according to this, we're getting a random time. So our, our power's working, our electricity's being pumped to the nearest house, and it's gone off. And we don't know how long this random is going to be. Anywhere between 10, uh, sorry, anywhere between 1 and 20 seconds. There we go. We're back on again. That was actually quite, so now we've got more wind. And so what we've genuinely done here is we've created not only the animations, but the conditions for, the random conditions for wind power. And again, what if you did this for all of them? What if you had two or three or four or five of these and you ran three or four or five pieces of code? The only problem with that I see, there we are, we stopped so we've got no power. The only problem with that I see, whoops, something wrong with my code, there we are, is that you can only have one forever loop. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to create multiple loop loops. You'd have to have them in some sort of uh, while true loop. While a block of wool is here, make this happen and do the logic, I think. Uh, that's what I would do. I would have in a forever loop. No, 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 not in a forever loop. I would have a while true. So I would have on chat command wind and then I would have a series of while true loops. While true and that true would be, let's go into a block and say test for, test for, Let's, let's, let's do this, let's show you how that would work. Block of gold at, and we're just gonna pick that location that we had earlier, where was it? Which location was it? I think I got rid of it, did I just delete it? Ah, I've got it up on the board there, so let's do a world position. And then it was, in fact, let me just double check. I think it was 933, but I'll double check. It wasn't, it was 95, whoops, it was 950, 950, 64, minus 232. Let me just go and double check that. Nine five zero sixty four minus 232, yeah. So as long as there is a block of gold there, it will detect for a block of gold and it will do what it's supposed to do. So let's disengage this and put it into there. Let's test for this. I am going to press play. And that's not working. Why is that not working? Let's just do that. While test for gold at this location is true, Fill with redstone. Let's try that again. That hasn't worked. Am I getting something? It didn't work with the redstone either. Am I doing something wrong with this coordinate? I'm just going to put a pile of gold around and see if I got that wrong somehow. Nope. I definitely didn't, did I? Wild test for gold. I've done this before, actually. I've, I've got a really nice... Um, I've got, a, I know, right, Barry, it's just one thing after another, but I love this. So, Tessa, am I doing something wrong? I've got 950, 64, minus 232. No, that's definitely the right coordinates. Test for and therefore do. Why is test for not working? Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It's because it's not in a forever loop. So, you're right. Let's just... It was that one, right? So I have to put in wind, chat wind. That's the whole point. Lol, lol, lol. Wind. There we go. And 
So now we're getting random. So let's just see if we are still getting random while the tele while we've animated this. And that's all that is, is a stop start animation. It's nothing clever. It's not actually relating. It's just modeling. It's not relating to the redstone. But any minute now we should get a pause on that. And while it's not working, we won't have power. There we are. However, if at any point there is not a gold block. Right, it's working again. You can see that working in the background. If I remove the gold block, then that will continue until its next round because it's already engaged in the code. So it's going to do that randomly, then it's going to stop, and then it will not happen again, ever. We could wait here for 10 minutes and that won't happen because there's no gold block there. And it's checking in ticks, because remember Minecraft works in ticks, so it's check, 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 check. And it's like, nope, there is no gold, there is no gold, there is no gold, there is no gold. And then what we can do is we can pop some gold back down. Which one was it? <laughs> I can't remember which one it was, it was that one, right? So let's see if this works. It's gonna tick, tick, tick. Oh, I have to press wind. So that's... That didn't work. Whoops. Twinned. What is going on? It's that one. Bam, bam, bam. There we are, it's working again. Oh, I take my time, eh? You'd think, I, you'd, think, you'd think I didn't work with Minecraft every day. And so, um, there we go. So what we could do is we could swap that out and then put that in a forever loop. But then it has a conditional. So yes, it's in a forever loop, but it has a conditional. And that condition is, I mean, we've done test for gold, but that could be anything. You could add any, you could also do, let's go into logic. Now I'm getting carried away, but you could do if true then in a forever loop. So if true then, and I'm going to get rid of the while, if test for gold at this location, then it's the same thing rather than while, or else, um, what else? So if that doesn't happen, else spawn, Let's check this out. A villager. Am I allowed a villager? Yes, yeah, spawn a villager at my location and we'll make it hundreds of them. Because if there's no power, if there's no electricity, there will be riots. <laughs> okay, try this. So as long as there's gold there on a forever loop, the power goes. But if there isn't gold there, <gasps> if there isn't, it's going to fin... Oh no, we killed it. So where's the... Where's the villagers? <laughs> where's, the, where's my villagers? I feel done. Typical Brits. No rioting. Oh, wow. There they are. They've had enough. The, the peasants are revolting. <laughs> oh! And that's going to keep happening. And people are going to keep gathering and until the authorities fix the problem. Which I now can't do because there's villagers in the way. Oh no! <laughs> this is chaos! And I can't kill them because that's not fair. So they're just, I'm just going to have to... Wow. <laughs> I can't fix the power, Barry. There. Oh, I, I almost did. Ah, right. I'm going to have to let them wander around. And then when I'm finished. Right, fix the power. I can't. There, there. Right, right. Get one on the side of that one. Get out of my way. 
Now I'm, now I'm getting violent and I can't get violent. That's the whole point. The peasants are truly revolting. <laughs> Help! I can't do this. Right, okay, I'm gonna have to get power back. I will restore order if you all just go home, I promise. I'm the mayor. This is a nightmare. Don't vote me in. <laughs> okay, there, look. Yay! Right, okay, so on the... I should have solved the problem. Ah. <sighs> We have power, we have no more riots, and what we can actually do is we can go into the code. That was crazy, right? What a cool exercise. And we can do, now this is gonna be cruel, but what we can do is we can do mobs. I don't know if you can do this. I don't know if you can just kill animals automatically, but I'm gonna do, Go up to the top. If I can restore order, then kill. No, I'm not allowed to. You're not allowed to kill animals. That is something I wished I could do for my biodiversity lessons, but I couldn't just get rid of the entities. I wonder if there's something else. Apply something to the nearest monster. We wouldn't be allowed. Clear all effects. Teleport, teleport, enchant. Detect block, execute. So there's another one. Detect block at X. If found, run command. That's quite nice. Execute the nearest player as... No. No, we just can't get rid of them. Oh, well. Oh, hang on. We could do... Where did we see execute... Did I see if found run command? Let's see if we can run a command. Detect block um, gold at the same location. Hey, we're really we're really going out there, right? I, I don't right, forward slash kill or so let's say remove. Remove is better. Remove is the same command at e. Yes! <gasps> the rioters have gone home. I, I'm genuinely amazed by this. This is one of my favourite streams ever. So as long as we've got power, as long as... And we can make this a power station with like a, a, a grid lever or something in there. But as soon as I get rid of it, and it runs its course, we end up with 100 rioters. I'm going to be smart about this, this time. And as soon as there's power, we should... get rid of all the rioters because the power's back on. I am so proud of that. <laughs> I would be a good mayor. I would be... Vote for me! Vote for Stephen Reed. How much worse can it get? Um, <laughs> that's gonna be my. That's gonna be my strap line, right? That's gonna be my strap line for run. Actually, running for the mayor of London. Vote for Stephen Reed, Minecraft guru. How much worse can it get? Um, so, so I'm gonna stop there before any more craziness happens. But this morning we made hydropower work using rain and water pressure. This afternoon we've been able to show how we can randomise the conditions for wind using rails, which have disappeared. Oh, that's because I killed entities. I killed all those entities. Or we've worked out that we can use code, a variety of different types of code, to animate the conditions for wind power and then attach to that code civil unrest <laughs> when there is no power. How awesome is that? Tomorrow morning, we are going to be doing, um, 
we're going to be doing biopower and we're going to be using composters for exactly that. Tomorrow is going to be biopower um, and then tomorrow afternoon is going to be solar panels and solar power and all the things we can do with that. So if anyone has any requests or questions, get them to me directly, um, either through Facebook or Twitter. Otherwise, have a fantastic evening. Stay safe, stay well, stay indoors, and I will see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. GMT. Bye, everyone.